We are standing in Washington State here along a chain of volcanoes that runs roughly 800 miles or about 1300 kilometers from southern British Columbia, Canada, all the way down to Northern California. If we could take a view from space, we would see that we are on a line called the Pacific Ring of Fire. And this is a predictable pattern of volcanism and earthquake activity. That is the result of plate tectonics, plate collisions happening right now, just a little west of us off the coast of Western North America. Let's take a closer look. Hey, just a real quick message from me, Heather, the host here at Let's Go Geo. Actually, I am host, videographer, photographer, editor, creator, all that stuff. This channel is run solely by me, and I started it because I do love geology and all things related to the topic, and I love teaching, and I thought it would be a great way to bring to people that in the field experience, but digitally. So Let's Go Geo was born. The project's going well, but I have a lot of great other ideas. So if you want to help me out, support me, and help the project move along, you can find me on Patreon, and you can become a fan there as well as get access to exclusive content. So head over to Patreon. Otherwise, let's get back to today's topic. After the most recent eruption of Mount St. Helens, geologists and ecologists flocked to the area so they could see the aftermath of the volcanic eruption. Botanists were thrilled to see the succession of plants that sprouted up pretty much the year after the eruption. And geologists were humbled by one particular volcanic hazard. The ash plumes and the lava flows, they get all the attention. But it turns out there's another hazard. And we found out in the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption that the issue that we should be paying more attention to are the lahars. So lahars are basically debris flows. They're this slurry of ash and volcanic debris and melted ice and snow that comes cascading down the volcano. Lahars are actually a really big risk factor when it comes to these cascade volcanoes. And that's because they are covered in glaciers. Rainier has over 20 glaciers and Adams is also covered in glaciers. When and if Rainier erupts anytime soon, it will be a huge risk factor for places like Tacoma, particularly for these lahars. If you want to assess the risk of these volcanoes, it's best to just look at a map of the drainage patterns around the volcanic peak. Let's head up a little further and see if we can get a little better view of these volcanoes. It's been a while since this has been logged. These trees are a lot taller, not as much sun getting down here a lot cooler. I'd say this is a good spot for a break. These streams and rivulets, they'll work their way down to the main water bodies, the rivers. Those waterways will swell and breach their banks. They can take out roads and bridges. It's catastrophic to pretty much anything or anyone in its way. The roads are covered in pumice, so pumice is basically this stuff right here. You can see this. This is what the roads are covered with. Pumice is basically it's an extrusive volcanic rock, and you can think of it as a frothy rhyolite. So that means it is very silica-rich rock. So this is probably a piece of Mount St. Helens pumice, pretty likely, because if we were standing here in the 1980 eruption, we would have been right in the line of fire or pumice. Let's keep going. There are over 20 of these volcanoes in the Cascade Range. And there's thousands of other volcanic vents and volcanic related features. There it is, Mount St. Helens. So if I were standing here in 1980 when it erupted, pretty much probably be dead because the ash plume and all the material came this way. There's again, there's pumice just covering the ground here. So there are other volcanic hazards though to consider with these all the cascade volcanoes and they can range from the lava flows, the pyroclastic flows, the um, the ash plume I already mentioned and then you know obviously air quality becomes an issue then too and then the lahars we talked about. Very viscous thick like molasses magma will basically get shaken up and pop. That's how these volcanoes work even Mount Rainier. If you'd like to learn more about Mount Rainier, check out my video 
all on Mount Rainier. I did a very in-depth video. We talked about why the lahars are such a huge risk factor and why Tacoma is in the line of fire. So geologists actually monitor the Cascade volcanoes pretty heavily, especially after the Mount St. Helens 1980 eruption. They use some pretty cool technology to monitor these volcanoes. This includes monitoring the movement of magma and the earthquakes, as well as those lahars. Based upon the eruptive history and the distance to population centers, they periodically put out these assessments on the risk of the volcanoes and they rate them. In 2018, they did an assessment and they designated nine of the volcanoes in Washington and Oregon as a rating of either high or very high. And those volcanoes include Crater Lake, Glacier Peak, Mount Baker, Mount Hood, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, the Newberry, and Three Sisters volcanoes, as well as Mount Adams. I hope you enjoyed today's look at the Cascade Range. We will be talking more about other Cascade volcanoes here. If you'd like to support the channel as I build this virtual Let's Go Geo project, then head on over to Patreon and you can become a patron. I have some behind scenes and exclusive content that I can share there. I will see you guys on the next adventure.